to you soon. Uh, so on an, on the next on the next talk we have uh, George. George, are you here? And I know you want to share your screen. Hello, yeah, I'm here. Great, George Zakarelis is going to present IPFS Tiny. So IPFS stands for Interplanetary Five System. And George is a big fan of decentralization. So peer-to-peer -peer chatting over Bitcoin at day and <laughs> and, uh, and you know IPFS at night for space. So yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> so, George, the the floor is yours. Uh, yeah, I want. Ah, perfect. Uh, would you give me the presenter uh, rights? Yeah, sure, Montos. No, you have it, Red. You are the presenter. Okay. <laughs> but uh, okay, George. You, so be. Yeah. I have to find you in the list. Okay, perfect. I'm sure. Great. Great. Should be Great. seeing my slides, right? Okay, it's coming up. We're trying, yeah. Our rules are turning. Um, is it okay? Should I start? Oh, ah, now it's okay. Perfect, yeah. All right, so welcome to IPFS Tiny. Um, as you can tell, it's related to IPFS, and uh, IPFS Tiny is basically Liberspace's effort in bringing IPFS closer to embedded systems and uh, space applications. So let's get straight into it. Uh, before we start with IPFS Tiny, I will cover like two basic uh, terms here, IPFS and IPLD. IPFS is the interpl interplanetary file system, which is like the whole solution of uh, it's the, the full package. And IPLD actually is a part of IPFS, uh, but it's grown so much that it's now a different project. It stands for interplanet inter uh, sorry, interplanetary linked data. And it is actually the data model that IPFS uses to sort of uh, specify data. Uh, so let's focus on IPFS. So IPFS is a distributed file system. Uh, this means that if you store data to this to IPFS, at the end of the day, uh, anything related to your file, to your stored file, will not live will not live in one machine, uh, but it will uh, instead live across the network and uh, IPFS in order to be distributed, it utilizes a pretty peer network. And uh, they also use uh, DHT. I think it's still Kademlia DHT to sort of boost uh, routing between peers and uh, help peers make gossip, like uh, learn where its block is uh, stored. And uh, another great, maybe the greatest attribute of IPFS is that it is content addressed. Uh, this means that in IPFS, whenever you request something or a file basically you never ever mention locations you mention cids cid stands for content identifier and uh, you basically the when you request a file from ipfs this is all the content identifier which is like the file identifier is everything that you need in order to receive the data from anybody in the network and uh, you don't need to trust anybody in the network in order to receive that file. And this is thanks to IPLD. And IPLD defines data so that uh, they're, they're specified basically as a Merkle DAG. And uh, I won't get deeper into what Merkle DAG is. So let's think of it like uh, data represented as a graph that can verify itself and uh, a graph that will realize whenever a small tiny bit of its body changes. Uh, Merkle DAG has nodes, like a, like a graph it is. Um, those nodes are self-descriptive, meaning that the file itself, but, and, but every other subsection of the file as well, can uh, sort of describe themselves as to what they are and what they are storing, their file, their, their size. And uh, self-descriptiveness leads to compatibility, both backwards and forwards. So like uh, a file today in IPFS can be of a specific CID version, for example, CID version zero, which was the first version of uh, files, so to say, in IPFS. Everybody now moves move towards a new version of CID, CID version one. It uh, depicts uh, files in a, in a pretty different way, but the whole network is still compatible with CID version zero just because of self-descriptiveness. And on top of that, due to the fact that it's uh, a Merkle DAG, basically, 
files are self-verifiable. So this would be like what a uh, picture of Earth would look like according to IPLD. So let's suppose we have a picture of Earth and uh, it is basically all the this array of blocks, data one to data four. So all together they make up the PNG file and IPLD will construct this small graph on top of the file where you have basically the, the lowest layer um, to be like CIDs pointing towards the blocks themselves. So like CID, the leftmost CID is the one that corresponds to data one. And recursively working your way, working your way upwards, you build like intermediate, intermediate uh, fathers and uh, you end up uh, at the end with one root father, which is like the CID of the file. And it is unique and deterministic uh, for each file. Like if you regenerate the same file, if you if you represent earth.png again in IPLD under the same rules, of course, like, uh, like for example, there are many different trees you can construct. Like uh, this is a binary tree over the file, but you can also make other DAGs like uh, flat DAG, for example, where you would have one father and all the blocks would be intermediate, uh, sorry, it would be immediate childs to the root father. So if you have the same file and the same rules for the graph construction, it, you will always get the same CID. And this CID is unique for the file. So let's get into IPFS Tiny. Uh, IPFS Tiny is basically a C++ Tiny implementation of uh, IPFS. And it is mainly embedded friendly. And uh, this, I guess many people know what it means. Uh, in a nutshell, I would say it's like maintaining respect towards the system resources. Uh, this mainly extends towards memory allocation. You don't want to do dynamic memory allocation and this like this renders you a little bit disabled because there are many oops there are many um many libraries in c++ that don't have this behavior so you have to like find uh, uh libraries to replace like stl for example you need etl instead or for protobuf the same thing you need libraries that are embedded friendly and uh, yeah that's that's uh, one of the main uh, attributes of ipfs tiny uh, also, it is meant to work on all architectures. So IPFS Tiny has the right abstraction layers. Uh, so it can work on uh, on an ARM system or an x86. And uh, we, I will cover a bit more on this later. And uh, it is also file system agnostic. So like to, to locally store data related to IPFS, you don't actually need a file system. You can do it without a file system, but you can also do it with a file system. And uh, this is left to the user of IPFS Tiny to decide, to decide how, he want, how he wants to implement. And uh, okay. Uh, also, it is meant to be OS independent, so you can run it bare metal, or you can have RTOS. You can run it run it on Linux. It's up to you. Uh, we we like draw the the right abstraction layer for the user to complete specific operations that are system dependent. And this makes IPFS Tiny uh, system independent in a way. So basically, if, if, if something can run C++, uh, it can run IPFS Tiny. I mean, this is a bold sentence, but uh, yeah, I would wrap it up to this one. So the downsides of everything. Um, there aren't many embedded friendly libraries, like I mentioned before. Um, we decided that we cannot deal with the network stack. We will also have an abstraction layer for communications. So we won't deal with the uh, networks and uh, the IP. So this is something we abstracted away. And this is something that led us into inheriting a simplified protocol. So like we want to use DHTs to route requests uh, from uh, node to node everything will be broadcast for this uh, first version at least. And uh, also we will not solve the problem of incentivization, which means that an IPFS tiny node will host data whenever you tell it to. It won't look for an incentive to do it. Uh, this is something that in IPFS, 
has been uh, sort of solved with Filecoin, but this is uh, something too big to even uh, discuss about integrating into small systems like uh, an STM uh, MCU, for example. So yeah, clearly IPFS Tiny is not IPFS. So what do, how do we connect the two? And this is where Bridge comes, comes into play. A Bridge is basically a node that runs both IPFS Tiny and IPFS. And uh, basically IPFS can access IPFS Tiny data and vice versa, IPFS Tiny can access IPFS data. And uh, IPLD makes this very easy due to the, due to the self-descriptive data and uh, this is a draft topology of how it, we, this would look like. So you have like a small sub-network of tiny devices. They are all connected to a bridge. And uh, this bridge uh, merges the, the data of the tiny sub-network with the broader IPFS. Um, so let's move into concepts because this presentation is actually about enabling new concepts. So given that we have IPFS tiny, um, what can we do? Let, let's suppose not that uh, we have a distributed ground station network as a bridge layer. So let's imagine that we have ground stations around the earth that are serving the role of the bridge we described, and they can like talk IPFS tiny and uh, IPFS. And uh, let's suppose we have uh, a satellite running IPFS tiny. What we have is something like this. We have a, a satellite executing orbits just like before. And whenever it passes over satellites, satellites uh, will detect, uh, will actually ask for missing blocks and the satellite will simply serve them those blocks. Now all the satellites are connected uh, together. They are all peers with each other and uh, they slowly assemble the, bigger, the big file that the satellite is transmitting. This could be like a huge experiment file that uh, could be many megabytes or even a gigabyte big. So what happens is that the satellite throws one block at a time over like, it is pretty state stateless from the aspect of the satellite. It stations simply uh, request blocks and the satellite provides them. And the, the ground stations request missing blocks because they can also share blocks with each other station to station. So basically the big file is transmitted only once as uh, any, any missing block in this pattern will be filled by a sat, uh, ground station and a second ground station won't actually need to receive the same block from the satellite itself. It can just get it from other ground stations. And uh, on this note, um, ground, uh, there, there could be a ground station that is malicious. So like maybe he wants to edit some parts of the data that satellite, the satellite is transmitting. So IPLD renders him empty handed because any slight change would uh, end up in a different file. Like it is trivial with IPLD to detect any file changes. So you can't really edit that. So let's build on top of concept one. Um, let's suppose we have a concept same like number one, but let's add more satellites. Hey George, let's you have four minutes left. Uh, if you want right. some time thank for you, questions. Uh, I will wrap this up like in one minute. In one minute, uh, if you consider many satellites talking with each other as well, let's say it's all uh, in one mission, mission satellites. Satellites can also share blocks with each other. So, for example, one satellite could have downtimes, and uh, other satellites uh, could have uh, have those the, the his blocks there. I mean, the satellites blocks uh, available. So, like you have uh, orbit gossip happening between satellites and uh, there is cross satellite block availability. So the more satellites you have, the more redundant your files, your file storage is basically. And uh, let's build on top of concept two. Let's suppose we have even more satellites and there is no specific mission, but instead the IPFS is the mission itself. So you would have something like this. Uh, I know it's a, <laughs> it's a pretty weird sketch. Um, Let's suppose that satellites uh, are in orbit and the only thing they do is store data for the IPFS network. And uh, you could consider this to be like the space layer of IPFS. You would have like the orbit layer, then the bridge layer, which would be the distributed ground stations. And then the distributed ground stations would merge the orbit layer with the earth layer, basically, with the IPFS uh, that is up and running right now. 
so this basically makes it interplanetary, so interplanetary on. Um, but it has huge problems, like what is the satellite incentive to store? This is something you have to solve, and you probably can't take a file coin into orbit. At least this is my initial take on this. And uh, there is another problem of how do you efficiently route requests and data over this dynamic topology because you cannot utilize the DHT as if the, the neighbors you can reach at its specific point in your orbit uh, always change. So, thank you. Uh, you can head to Liberspace Foundation on GitLab. IPFS Time is the name of the project. We are open source, of course. Also, some uh, friends from Protocol Labs made this uh, nice domain, arewinterplanetaryyet.org, so you can check status of IPFS Tiny there. And we will possibly demonstrate concept number one, the one with a single satellite, with uh, one of the next batches of cubics, and Satnux as the uh, ground, distributed ground station layer. Nice. So, thank you. Thanks, George. We have one question from Milenko. Direct, I directly go to it. So is the protocol able to handle large delays and how does it relate to integrate with DTN, BP, DTN, I think it's delay tolerant network slash BP, you can, you can uh, uh, define what, bundle I mean, protocol, thank you. Yeah. I mean, this is, uh, I'm not sure if IPFS tiny is advanced enough to even address this problem, I mean, Everything happens is like a block exchange. You do small transmissions of like one kilobyte. So I, I don't understand where delay comes into play here. Well, perhaps we can discuss this in, in the lobby. Yeah, maybe. I think yeah. uh, it's in the network. I mean, in the transmission. It is in the transmission. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? We can take another question for for George. Quick one. Else, you can reach out to him in the lobby after at the break. And thanks a lot, George, and all the best Thank on you. IPFS Tiny. Thank keep, you very uh, much. keep in touch because uh, I have also a blockchain project for space. I'd love to integrate that. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> See you. Okay. Thank See you. you. Ciao.